fun facts. What um, do you got? In real life, in real mythology, people actually thought rocks were just real. Yeah. Yeah, like I, people I can people literally thought that like, oh yeah, rocks like rocks are like no question they're real. Yeah, like, it's funny. Marco people, Polo yeah. actually claimed to have seen one. Like yeah. he legit claimed that, which um obviously he's a liar. Uh but and so that puts in a question but other things he's he? seen. Hmm. He said it was in Madagascar. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, the way he described it I, was he, very he said literal. He like, dropped an elephant. Yeah, it was like very that. much like not open to interpretation. Like it was like it, he was describing a bird that does not exist. You know yeah, what I mean it. Yeah. yeah. Um. So it, that's fun. But the rock was initially. So this is my. This is a fun fact. Not cool. It is a mythological creature, but it's actually when you think mythology, you think like Zeus and stuff. It's actually a Middle Eastern uh slash arab mythological creature Mm -hmm. um which is cool it's good to get uh some you know diversity uh in our mythology and so that's kind of where they originated um there were stories of big battles between these different types of birds and flying creatures and the rock was one of them i mean and so it carried over what would challenge it i don't know actually um i am not too familiar with all the mythology but it's I don't know, just other things that have their own names and that have that are big in their own ways. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Um, but so Sinbad, I think, is where I was actually first exposed to The Rock in one of those old movies. I I, I remember I, one of those scenes very. I don't remember clearly. Sinbad. I think I watched it when I was like a little, little, little kid. Yeah, perhaps yeah. it's something to revisit. Uh, I mean, same here. I just do remember some of it. Um, but so the basic story of The Rock, very basic story, is. Sinbad was in a shipwreck, and he was accidentally rescued by a rock. Accidentally. So, like, the rock was so big, the rock picked him up along with whatever the rock was picking up. I mean, right? what was the pop rock picking up? I don't know. It was probably, like, a piece of the ship or something oh. like that. Um, and Sinbad got included. And so Sinbad got flown to the nest um, on accident. And the, he's so small, the rock didn't even notice. Um, and he got stranded there. The rock, the nest was on this like giant peak. Like you can't get off the nest without flying. And if you fell off, it would be like death. Death. So he got stranded there. And so I believe he had like a fight with a hatchling. Like I think a hatchling was chasing him around while the Fish rock Fish fight. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, the hatchling's big. It's like being chased by like, a T Rex or something. The hatchlings are that big. Yeah, they're what? huge. Oh, um, the hatchling. Oh my god, that wouldn't it? The hatchlings are T Rexes. God dang it. Yeah, they're giant. Um, so, so it was less of a fight and more of like a uh, I'm running away. Um, but so the way he eventually escaped was the rock returned and he tied himself to the rock, and and the how rock do, just doesn't know. How and do you do that? He used part of his clothing to what? tie to to his leg to the rock's leg. And then when the rock ended up landing at another island, he got off and escaped, um, and his travels continued. But That's he a, was like high in the air, like just holding hold on, like oh my that, god, that would be a sick DM or a sick D and D thing. Yeah, like, like the rock players. literally just like you, sh- like oh yeah, uh, these stories. I mean, Sinbad's like a classic fantasy, basically fantasy. It's mythology, but it you know very much inspires fantasy. So yeah, Sinbad's a good source of ideas, yeah. and so there's the one including the rock. Um, yeah. So do you got any you got any fun facts? Um, I I have a th- fun fact. So rocks are kind of actually kind of sort of linked to the chaos realm. How are they linked? Um, through how they were made. Okay. So like for example, phoenixes are chaotic fire elemental yeah. fire so people don't really understand like why the heck are rocks but they're sort of related to phoenixes which are pretty cool and okay. phoenixes they're not just normal birds and D. they are freaking massive phoenixes D&D. yeah they're big as rocks in D. phoenixes are yes they're huge they're gargantuan they're huge oh they're, el- they're elder elementals they are freaking humongous huh i was so surprised because i've never encountered a legit f- uh, phoenix then yeah. We'll get to the phoenixes in another episode. Yeah, I mean, the I phoenix is like another monster in a Morgan, or some other monster book for D&D. Right, Next Mordecai's. M- Mordecai's, yeah. Tome. I don't know what it's called. Yeah, I don't know. Probably a tome. Just a book. So it's a tome. All right, go it's ahead. It's journal. Yeah, so basically they're related to phoenixes, which are pretty cool. Nice. Um. Yeah. Um, so they see each other on Thanksgiving. What's the turkey? Wait. It's elephant. <laughs> 
Or is it a rock-sized turkey? Are there rock-sized turkeys? That's true. Birds of prey have no quarrels with eating other birds. Yeah. So, And turkeys are not birds of prey. Rip the turkey. I can't believe the American national anthem was going to be a turkey. Actually, this fits because Thanksgiving is coming up. By the time this episode comes out... It'll be Thanksgiving. It will be around Thanksgiving. It might be past. Oh, uh, well... Happy Thanksgiving. If yes. It's earlier or later. Oh we're thankful for you. Yeah. Listeners. Boom. So. That's what I'm, yeah. That's what we're thankful for this Thanksgiving. I mean, it fits so well. Have a rock-sized turkey this Thanksgiving. Don't die from eating. You'll definitely have a food come after that. Oh, okay. the Thanksgiving leftovers? Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> You'd be eating them no, for the rest of your life. Grandma, sorry. If this is three years now, eat it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... I don't actually have any more. A lot of my fun facts have been sprinkled throughout. Yeah, um, honestly, me too. Okay, so but I do have extra ideas. ideas. Oh, I have a bunch too. All right, get going. My then. first one, make them. Oh, they're already massive. <laughs> make them. Uh, Bigger? I don't Bigger! think that's possible. Clock. I guess it is, but. Well, no, they're already big, which satisfies me. I okay. am eternally happy. But what I was thinking is... um. Take some magic and freaking slap the rock with it. Give them some more magic, you know, scrib it. Why make, would they have magic? Make it a thunderbird. Do you know what thunderbirds are? Oh, yeah, are? yeah, yeah, yeah. They're freaking the rocks. But, that, but that's a thunderbird. Just use a thunderbird. Are there thunderbirds in D&D? Well, if there aren't, make one. Homebrew it. But, but, but make it, like, make sense. Like a rock with freaking lightning powers? That's sick. Like, even dragons would be like, oh, God. Okay, uh, that, magic. That would literally make it worse for the dragon situation if it was a thunderbird. But that'd be like that'd be like just giving a regular bird magic. Like what's gonna do with magic? It's it's not smart. But make it a thunderbird. I thought it would be cool. Okay. You know, so cool. use rock to make a variant thunderbird. Yeah, like an alpha rock is like a thunderbird or something like that. You know. Yeah, or like a rock yeah. touched by something magical. Like God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, let's see what cool. I got here. Um. <laughs> Okay, well, let's just go one by one. All right, so I have right here just a little idea of kind of how to make things harder or easier, depending on how you want this encounter to go, in a way that doesn't change the rock. And so a classic one for to make it harder is to obviously add enemies, but one that would make sense with a rock is you could have a giant companion. And so instead of a rock hunting you, it's a rock with a giant riding it. And so you're not only fighting a rock, but you're fighting a giant. And so if you want like a higher level than 11 to be fighting, have a rock encounter, Maybe just throw on. Maybe it's not a rock. It's a, a giant with a rock mount. Or giants. Yeah, or more multiple. Yeah, that's true. Multiple yeah. probably fit. Um, to make it easier, uh, give places to hide or cover for your PCs. And this could actually make the encounter a little more fun, because um, rocks do hunt on the plains. But that doesn't mean there can't be like a boulder or like a ditch that the PCs are able to like jump behind or get into. That like the rock will have to like try to like reach in and get you from but it won't be able to uh or a house uh of course the rock would just be like i'm gonna take this house (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah provide cover and that makes it a little bit more uh possible for your pcs to like survive the encounter yeah i mean yeah no that that would be actually pretty cool but i feel like if you had to open planes against a rock like the players are one of them is gonna die yeah, one. Yeah, one. like literally, it's probably guaranteed that. Yeah, because you're not gonna. Be, if you, you really are putting up a fight, and the rock decides to do the strategy of flying up in the air and dropping you, like it has enough hit points. You're not gonna down it before it can do that. You know what I mean? So, it's, but of course, with magic like feather fall and stuff, you can save yeah. your. Yeah. You can yeah. save yourself. I kind of had one. Okay. Um You should. Uh, th- there should be a society. So this is what I, I envisioned. So imagine it's like a coastal cove. Right, you know, like coves, like some of the mountains is like hollowed out from erosion and that stuff. So, you, so you have like a city there, like a town of just people, okay. and a rock nests above it and feeds. Mm. So it feeds on whales, and then droplets of the whale falls down. Oh. So it's like a symbiotic relationship. Well, people would like. How does set- the rock? Uh, how does the rock? Um, what's good about the for the rock? Uh, people protect. It's eggs. Okay. So, you know, it's like protection. It's like ants. Oh, with nice. Like, ants with something. <laughs> huh. Uh, yeah. It's well, like, it's like, cool. um, rock, grub, and tree ants. 
or it's like that like yeah. poisonous mushroom. Yeah. All right. Anyway, no, yeah, that's, but a, that's a cool I, I don't idea. Think that's cool. Like, that's imagine cool going to a city and then city looking idea. up above, there's just a rock just chilling there. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it doesn't like want to kill people because it's like protecting its eggs. So it's just there's a rock. And just maybe chilling. it also provides protection from the city. Like the the rock understands that yeah. like this is good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like this is good. So no dragons or like no goblin invasions. Are yeah. It's not like, this is a safe place. We go that rock. Right. So, um, that's really cool. That's yeah, a cool so idea. I thought that was for a city. Cool. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, my idea here is I use this in the intro um, is to describe rock encounters by like them looking at like a normal bird in the sky, <laughs> but just one that's way closer. And then as it comes towards you, you just coming to that dreadful realization that it's a not a normal bird <laughs> or <laughs> and it, that it or, sees you <laughs> or it's like it's like a very sunny day and there's like no clouds like why is there just shadow like all of a sudden like oh like why is there just shade and you look at the bird <laughs> yeah, it's blocking out the sun dead <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah um, cool true intro. or just have it very subtle just be like don't lie like a caw or anything just have it where it's like there's there it's heavily amounts of shade are over you guys right now and you're like oh or sure. it comes from behind and the pcs have a bad passive perception or maybe you roll it or something and then the, all of a sudden it's just you <laughs> of a, a massive force just like <laughs> crushes you into the dirt <laughs> take like two d8s of damage and then it's talons wrap around you and it and then you're hoisted in the air going like super fat like certain miles per hour in the air wind going across your face this all happened in one turn right the it flew down grabbed you and then flew out grabs literally everyone and then you have no idea what's going on but then you look at the other pcs you guys saw your teammate just get just get snatched up by a giant gargantuan i keep saying giant gargantuan bird and is now being uh flown away they're just like, well, rip Jimmy. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah. Jimmy's gone. Yeah, that would be tough. Okay. Um, save him too. <laughs> all right, this is an encounter I liked. So obviously rocks are really like strong, and if you encounter one, it's going to be a fast, quick life or death situation where it's like if you, get, if you don't do this right, you're dead. However, a way to kind of have a slower burn with a rock is, is to have the party stumble across the nest. And you don't say it's a rock nest. You just say it's this giant mass of, like, trees, like, put together in and this circular, like, and, bowl. Yeah. And then you, if they climb up and look inside, you see giant eggs. And then you're like, okay, it's a nest. And then you're like, wait, a nest for what? <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Exactly. It's so big. <laughs> um, and now you have, like, this situation where it's like, what do we do? Like, there's all this treasure around, but what if the thing comes back? You know? So yeah. that's a fun encounter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that does sound fun. Well, I was, I was thinking one where it's like the rock, like freaking saves you or something like that. Like maybe you're getting attacked by giants or other big bad. Yeah. And then a rock you just see in the distance, just a rock just picks one up and leaves. Right. Just gone. <laughs> yeah. If your PCs are like losing to, and like, and you want to like redemption, I guess you shouldn't do this. But you could have it. At, you could be like, these are the planes. There's it's an a option. good this way cabin. to save them. Like you're yeah, not saying you some lightning bolt rains down and kills one. It's like it would make sense that a rock comes sense. by, and, just... and then maybe those monsters are like frantic now and like running away, and you yeah. probably are too. But um, yeah. yeah, that's a good way to do yeah, that. Yeah, you know, just save your. Okay. I I just imagine just a bunch of hill giants just chilling. They're like beating you up, and then one is just like talking, and then they're all like, and then he just stops talking. Like all of a sudden, they're like. Where did he go? And they look back, and he's just gone with the rock, just taking him. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? Um, no, the rock could be in and out in one turn, like, so easily. It, probably... it does not have flyby. I should make that clear. So if it's in the space of anything else, that thing could get an opportunity to attack. Probably... But imagine who the it, heck cares? Imagine if it did. That would be horrifying. Yeah, but it's stra- it wouldn't ever use it, because that's not what birds of prey do. Right, that's true. Um, okay. This is an encounter I really liked that i thought of that i think would just be fun but it's also just because i'm evil sometimes um (laughs) and so it's a rock encounter on the ocean Uh and so let's say your your pcs are sailing on their little boat or whatever bad (laughs) yeah (laughs) and then you just see this giant rock swoop down and just circle your boat 
And and you can be like cocky about it, you know what I mean? You don't need it to be sudden because the rock's like, yep, there's my prey just sitting there. Um, it has it can't do anything, <laughs> and then your PCs are like, oh god. So give them a little bit of time to like prepare. maybe prepare for something. It's a ballistas, right? But then the rock will come down, just obliterate the boat in like one turn, depending on the size of the ship. Uh, the sails are gone. Sails are gone, and perhaps just pick up part of it and take it back to its nest. And so. If there's PCs on the part of the ship it takes, they have to, like, hold on while they're, like, hoisted in the air. Um, that probably means... I think the rock should have the siege monster ability. It does double damage to structures. No, people. no. It's not a siege it's monster. It's a rock. It's just big. It just can deal the damage. Well, but I it's feel not like specifically a ship has, like, suited. no chance. It doesn't have a chance. It doesn't need siege. Well, I mean, ships normally have, like, 300 health. Like, they're chunky ships. Well, depending on the size, if it's like a giant pirate ship, it will be fine. the The rock will destroy the ship, or at least part of it. But I'm imagining like the rock like pick up the ship with part of the PCs, and then the PCs have to make <coughs> checks to stay on while it's like flying through the air. If they succeed on the checks, they get brought to the nest. Or if if it's like an airship, like a blimp. Oh god! Yeah, and then the yeah. rock just comes from the side and just yeah, like yeah, air to shift. Him. That would be interesting. Um, but if they fail the check, then they plummet into the ocean. And now, so you have PCs that are either stranded in a nest or stranded in the middle of the ocean. And both of those are fun encounters or yeah. fun situations. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that is fun. Um, I thought this is a interesting one. So there is actually a type of bird of prey. Lives in Africa. I can't forget its name. I think it's like the ghost hawk or something. I don't know. But they okay. actually have super long legs. Like a raptor, I guess. Like an ostrich. Mm-hmm. And they'll actually they'll hunt by just sprinting. And like just stomping things. And killing them. Mm. And then they would grab and fly away like a normal hawk would. So I just imagine one of these rock size. Just sprinting so, down the plains oh, and just bonk. That just would be that'd be scarier things. than something that flying at you. That would be scarier. Like, and <laughs> what the thing is, they can fly, so it oh. could literally just pick you up and fly away. But it just it, it's like a road runner, but just a mm. hawk. Okay, interesting. So it just runs. <laughs> I just imagine it just running around, just stomping things. Huh. And it just flies away. That would be a scary thing. True. That's yeah. a very different tactic, but very it could it could throw your PCs off guard. If you have PCs that are like, they listen to the Albert Bros, so they know what's up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so you could you could throw, of course, now they know this idea too, but whatever. Make um, it a goose. Oh, God, God, God dang it, now they know it's a goose. Make it a duck. Oh, make it a rock-sized goose. <laughs> That's the ultimate. They like um, legs too. Oh, and nice. And cloud giants like, hey, <gasps> Cloud Giant has a big goose and it lays eggs. Yeah, but it's a rock. You could just use rock stats. Rock stats okay. for the goose. Um, okay, so I have an idea. It's like world building, uh, basically interesting world building. So egg stealers, egg smashers, or nest treasure hunters could all be like local jobs of like a mountain society um, that's like around rocks perhaps. And that could be a fun like mission you know or like, like a fun city that specializes in like taking out rocks or something like yeah that. or that's just on the like the tavern bulletin board and it just adds flavor and like uniqueness to your to your city or to your lo- locality um locality that's not used correctly here um but you know you, you want the world to seem cool and unique as you move through it um, and you want to seem real. And so I think jobs like egg stealers, egg smashers, and nest treasure hunters can just be cool ways to just say, like, there's a society here that is different than if you were somewhere else. And it could also clue in – it could be a hint, a pretty explicit hint to your players that there's rocks in these mountains. So be careful. Um, so, yeah, yeah that's, that's an idea. Yeah, I'm actually out of ideas. All right. You've run dry. Um, let's see. I don't think I have many more. Oh, okay. So I mentioned this earlier. Um, so in combat strategies, it wouldn't kill. It would. It would probably kill you. And I mentioned this with societal structure. It regurgitates its food right into the hatchlings. So I'm thinking you could make a mechanic for if you're eaten and then regurgitated. Like maybe it doesn't kill you, 
Maybe it will, but maybe there's just damage taken. Like maybe it's acid damage. Oh, or like something. if it just swallows you. Yeah, if it just swallows you, <laughs> and then that, and then you get regurgitated, and into so you just other. like you just splat onto the nest or into one of the mouths, and it could just be like all these crazy checks. You know, it's like you take the damage, but now you gotta like st- like stay alive inside its like stomach or throat, and then as you're getting like poured into the hatchling's mouth, you need to make like a dexterity saving throw to try to like not fall in. And then maybe if you do fall in, you got to, like, crawl out or you're just going to die. And <laughs> there's all this stuff you can do with that. Um, I actually have one. Okay. For a king to flex on the other people, have people fan um, rock feathers <laughs> okay. onto them. By yeah. the way, if you don't know how big they are, you can use the most canoes. Rock feathers? Wow. That's yeah. cool. So, like, just four people just, like, oh, with, like, a, just a giant feather. Yeah, you need, like... I feel like like machinery to, to air, really do that. Air conditioning, baby. In the fantasy world, it's just like this machine that just twirls a bunch of rock feathers. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, my last one is I just wanted to emphasize something that's really cool about the rocks. And it's PCs and your players in general, I find, can sometimes get trapped in the mindset of when you encounter something, you fight it and you kill it. And because your DM is probably giving you things that you're capable of fighting. Um, But the rock is one where it can really make your PCs feel powerless in a good way in that it can shake up this idea of, oh, if we encounter a monster, we fight it. Instead, the encounter could be like, we, like, it's, it's very clear with a rock that you don't want to fight it. Like, it will kill one of you guys at least, right? So it will like just completely throw them off and say like, and they'll be like, we need to like hide or we need to run away. We need to be smart and leave instead of just roll initiative, right? And start fighting. Um, <coughs> Cause I hate when it's just like, like, oh, a monster fight, if a monster comes, oh, we're gonna kill it. Kill it's it. Like, I don't like that assumption, yeah. you know? I like to think of it as a real world. And it's like, if you throw in a rock, although it's CR 11, it could even if your players are CR eleven, it could kill one of them pretty easily, right? Um, so especially if it does the whole fly up in the air and drop, it's like a loophole tactic. It's right? literally instant death. It's instant like, death. The, yeah, it doesn't like matter how strong you are if you don't got magic to support yourself. You're gonna actually. Fall I'm pretty sure. Death. So the max damage of it is if it hits you with its claw and its beak. If you do, if you add the average, that's fifty damage. If it flies up and drops you. It could go up to like a hundred and thirty damage. Yeah, this is one turn, and that's one turn. Actually, with we the can rock. calculate this pretty easily. Well, it would be, yeah. So it it does its damage on the attack with its talons, and it grapples you, then a beak. So, so now we're 50. we're sitting at around fifty on average, and then it flies up, uh, with one action or one movement, one hundred and twenty feet in the air, drops you. That's twelve d sixes. Or if it, uh, it can't dash actually. Yeah. Um. So. That's a lot of damage in one turn. Um, of like course, 80. that's not exactly playing to how it would really act. That's if it was a very smart bird. It's not. So it's not going to be that If it was super smart, smart, boulder drop, you take like 30 damage. Talon beak drop another boulder. When you hit right. the ground, boulder. Yeah, I mean, they're they're tough creatures. They are so tough. it's a really good way to make your PCs like, oh, we need to figure something out that isn't pulling out our swords. I do really yeah. like how the rock is like the apex predator. It it's is like really if cool. you have like it's very good for world building because if you have like a society, you know all these monsters attack. But there's like this one rock that keeps everyone in check. That's like if yeah, you, you're gonna get eaten. <laughs> like, I really like how it's not an intelligent creature. It's just a it's, bird. It's just and so you have all these dragons and all these like I'm the best type creatures. But, but there's the always rock, that rock who who doesn't have that mindset. The rock's just fish. like I'm a big bird. Big bird. I'm just here to I'm just here to eat, and you're part of that. Extra idea: Elmo's big bird as a rock. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Elmo, big, big bird. bird, a big yellow bird. Um, yellow bird. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Well, that's rocks. That is rocks. Um, what I really like rocks. Just the idea of them is just. They're re- freaking, I really like them just too. Just how even dragons squeal when they see a rock. Just freaking amazes. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Well, that concludes our lore section.